I've seen terrible things born out in the darkness. Every moment brings them closer. My future does not begin here, but yours does. It's time to step beyond the light. And it all begins with a splinter. another one. They all scan the same. Empty. Why did the darkness invite us here? You're quiet today. Yeah. It's just, we keep coming face to face with darkness. And every time we fail to stop it, we're just so powerless. I'm picking up a distress signal. Someone's in trouble. My friends, we are Barracks. He has a lot to answer for. Darkness walks among us. I'll send a message to let Zavala know. No, wait. Where is the signal coming from? Here. Europa. I've tracked Varix's distress signal beyond the ridge. We'd better hurry. It was Varix, you know. He instigated the riot at the prison of elders. He's equally responsible for Kate's death. The Vanguard's been after him since. No wonder he's hiding on a desolate moon. What is up, my Squirtleites? It is I, your king, welcoming you back to more Let's Play Destiny. Today, we begin the Beyond Light campaign. And uh, as we head off to rescue Verix, which we're going to need to do as quickly as possible, uh, welcome to a whole new me, a whole new hunter. A hunter that is actually well-equipped, modded out, it's got a nice kit, got a brand new exotic. This is going to be a lot of fun. And it looks like we are going to immediately be dealing with some Fallen, which is not a surprise given the nature of what's going on and the that opening cutscene that we got before the actual campaign began. Oh, goody. This is going to be fun. All right, let's kill a bunch of Fallen. So I got a rocket launcher. I got my Deafening Whisper back with my lead and gold auto-loading perk. And I've got this new exotic hero, Suros Regime, which is new, but also not too new because, well, it's uh, a Destiny 1 weapon, but reprised. Now, Suros Regime is a bit interesting because you can actually change the way that its behavior works uh, within the weapon's menu. You can either have it fire slowly and at a ridiculous range, or you can have it fire in a way that the rate of fire will actually spin up as it heads into the bottom of the magazine, um, although it will do less damage and be it's more stability focused. Now, the other thing about Suros is that it will occasionally, on multi-kills, actually heal you. 
these fallen had an unfamiliar house symbol. Who are we dealing with? And this can be uh, made even more common by getting the catalyst for this weapon. We can take a look at this thing really quickly. So, Suros is blue and red this time around, as you can see here. We have it on dual speed receiver. Weapon rate of fire slows while the weapon damage increases. And then the alternative is spinning up, which I can demonstrate how that works. It fires like this. So you can see, basically for doing a lot of damage at the bottom end of the mag, just going to say it right now, this is the PvP perk, this is the PvE perk. That's really all you need to know. And yeah, the bottom half of each magazine deals bonus damage and has a chance to return health on kill. The service regime catalyst can only be gotten through, uh, I believe, crucible matches and can only be completed in crucible matches. It's also got four different types of ornaments to get. My personal favorite being Suros Chrome. But with all that said... Let's head on inside and see what's going on. Someone's been staying here. There's traces of darkness energy. It's Braytech from Eventide, Clovis Bray's Golden Age colony here on Europa. Whoever was here was using it to track barracks too. They must have intercepted the distress signal before we did. Okay, I've got the signal's true origin point now. It's not far. Let's hurry. All right, off we go. Can we uh, Sparrow here? Yes, we can. Let's move. And let's move fast. We've got ground to cover. Okay, and looks like we're not going to be able to get through there without killing some enemies. So, I am charged with light, and my new build actually allows me to heal myself uh, when throwing grenades, which is pretty darn cool if I can actually use it in conjunction with, well, when I've actually got, taken some damage. Now, it only consumes one stack of light every single time I do so, but this is also a very high uh, strength focus build, which works really well on the solar subclass because of this knife right here. Now, this knife, if I am actually to use it properly, and I will certainly try as I kind of dodge away from you, is a pretty high damage... Uh, knife that is able to one-shot a lot of weaker enemies. You also notice that with my kinetic siphon available, that also allows me to uh, get a lot of super energy really quickly. Now, let's see. We got these guys here, which these aren't too bad. I can deal with these guys with relatively little issue, but I'm wondering, are they going to throw a big boy at us? Not quite. Let me sh uh, shoot that wrong by accident. Let's try that again. Okay, we actually got him that time and got rid of his shield. There we go. I didn't even have to use really use my special weapon or my rocket at all. Now, the exotic armor that I'm using is the Stompy's boots, which allow me to jump a little bit higher, allows me to fight more airborne and the like. So this will be great for that reason and that reason alone. Darkness. It's close. I feel it, but it's different somehow. How is it different exactly, Ghost? How is it different? Well, I suppose we'll find out. We're going to be running the solar subclass for at least a little bit here. Not for as long as I would, as you're thinking, probably. But it is going to be the predominant light subclass for the Beyond Light campaign. Uh, I can promise you that. Make an example of 
All right, we gotta go fast. Varix is in trouble. Should be just up ahead. Let's fight our way through, everybody here. Oh, Soros, you are going to be so helpful here. Where is he? He's up somewhere. Just take out all of the shanks. Make sure that you're actually aiming down sights. If you want to get the full damage out of this thing. There we go. I will absolutely take all of that glimmer. Thank you very much. All right. What's up? Here, have that. All right. Now, oh, this is going to be fun. Hi, everybody. Here, I'm going to do that, and I'm going to go right around Varix with it. There we go. Good job, Blade Barrage. I am. You're fine. Wait a second. I'm picking up more chatter on the Fallen's comms. Have them surround the perimeter. Snake does not leave here alive. It will be done, Aramiskel. Savior, hurry. You must free me. I, I would like to. Come, let, me, let me shoot it. Come on. There we go. And notice how breaking that actually hurt us. Varix thanks you. And now, must hide. Not so fast. We heard your message. Darkness walks among us. What do you mean? There is no time. They are coming. Varix asks for your protection once more. I will take shelter inside. Succeed. You got it. All right, let's do this thing. All right, what do we got here? Oh, hello. That is a big boy right there. All right, so this is a brand new enemy type that is uh, inter been introduced in Beyond Light known as the Brig. It is a fallen enemy. Brigs are very big, powerful enemies, not unlike, uh, well, actually another enemy that will be facing a little bit of... Uh, later on here in this campaign as well. Now, Briggs, uh, the trick with them is you want to basically just do raw damage to them as much as you can. Once you have them at half health, their weak spot will be exposed, which you can then actually hit with precision damage. Once the Brig is down, we're good to go, at least for this part. Then prove it. We expect answers. Come to Varix, and you will have them. But know that our work here has only just begun. And there it is. All right, we also get an introduction to the Armor Synthesis quest, which we'll talk about that a little bit later. But Beyond Light campaign begins. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you all so very much for watching. I, ho I hope you all enjoyed this episode very, very much, and I will see you all in the next one.